What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost and with the conclusion of The Rise of Skywalker and the end of the Skywalker Saga, the conclusion of the Disney sequel trilogy, a lot of people have had different opinions on how exactly it felt. You know, it's been disappointing for a lot of people, for a lot of fans, obviously, for Lucasfilm, for Disney in the box office, there's been a lot of disappointment. So I, when I saw this article, 10 undeniable ways that Disney's new Star Wars trilogy changed the franchise forever. I thought it was interesting. I think that there's some good points in here, uh, namely the first one being something that's very near and dear to my heart, which is the expand the universe. So I'll talk about that one a little bit, but uh, there's some other takes in here, some I agree with, some that I completely do not, but uh, I thought it'd be interesting to take this person's look at it and kind of evaluate that. Uh, and I think that it's undeniable that uh, it has changed Star Wars forever. Unless some miracle happens and someone comes back and wipes everything away, and says, uh, yeah, 7 through 9, they just don't exist anymore. Just forget about it. Uh, and I think the chances of that are so ridiculously slim. I don't think we're ever going to see that, unfortunately. Uh, we're moving forward, and this this is this. Now, I always have the Expand Universe. I always have Legends. Um, but as far as what Disney canon is, um, unfortunately, I do think that it's changed Star Wars forever. And it's pretty irreversible. But let's see what they say. Uh, and they basically say for a lot of people it's been a mixed bag and for everyone it's been a roller coaster of emotion and serious speculation. No matter anyone's opinion on the trilogy though, there's no denying that it's severely impacted the Star Wars universe and changed a lot, both giving and taking away what fans already had, loved, and adored within it. And uh, that's a good point. Here are 10 ways the new Star Wars trilogy changed the franchise forever for better or worse. And this one, it's probably probably be my number one because of how near and dear it was to me. Close the door on the return of some Legends characters. The loss of the expanded universe, now known as Legends, as canon, hurt a portion of the Star Wars fan base, and since then, said portion has had some trouble getting on board with Disney's plans and ideas. And to say some trouble would be an understatement. Uh, I know a lot of expanded universe fans. There are some, uh, like me, who have watched it and absolutely despise a lot of what's going on. Uh, there are some who have watched it and are okay with it. They're, you know, the fans of both canon. And there's some who absolutely refuse to even give it a chance uh, because of what Disney did and the way they treated the expanded universe. So there's, there's a mixed bag out there, but a lot who really don't like this new canon. Unfortunately for those fans, a lot of Legends characters will now forever or will now never be a part of the films or the canon. Well, it's not unfortunate because once we've seen what they did, we don't want our characters bastardized any more than they already are. While characters like Thrawn and Bane have made returns, uh, incredible characters and, and Thrawn, Fran, Thrawn and Bane have made bastardized returns. Characters like Jason, Jane, and Anakin will never return due to Kylo, and it looks unlikely we'll ever see Mara Jade, and a host of others will also be left out due to the movies. And yeah, Mara Jade doesn't fit. I've made videos about this before. Mara Jade does not fit. There are still people that want to bring her back. She doesn't fit in this. Luke Skywalker is a shell of himself. He is Jake Skywalker. Mara Jade Skywalker does not fit into this canon because the story doesn't make sense. Not with what they did to Luke Skywalker. Uh, divided the fan base. Uh, that one is for sure. The sequel to as a whole divided a lot of fans, some for the loss of the EU. Now, this is kind of a stupid shot. A small section for what are unfortunately bigoted reasons, uh, maybe like 0.00001%. Uh, maybe name some. Name some for me. And mostly, so at least he gives credit, mostly due to their feelings on the movies themselves and what they did and how they impacted the franchise. The Last Jedi in particular, and both that and The Rise of Skywalker massively highlighted the divide in critics and fans. Some people love the sequel, some hate them, and it has shown a toxic side of the fan base that will likely remain for the coming years. No, it's just been fans, and you happen to piss off nearly all sections of fandom. Concluded the Skywalker saga, and yes, that is unfortunately true. It's basically undeniable that you have concluded the Skywalker saga. There's some people that hashtag save Ben Solo. Uh, it's not happening. Uh, Kylo Ren, Adam Driver does not want to play Kylo Ren ever again. The last iteration we saw of him was on Saturday Night Live. That's the last you'll see. He doesn't want anything to do with Star Wars anymore. You killed off every member of the Skywalker legacy, and now you have Rey Skywalker, the Palpatine, carrying on the Skywalker name. Disgusting. More inclusive cast. 
Uh, well, I mean, I suppose if you include 76 seconds of screen time at the Rise of Skywalker, it was all worth it, right? For Rose Tico, it was just all worth it. You know, at least uh, when we had characters introduced in the original trilogy and, uh, you know, people introduced in the prequel trilogy, say, you know, Lando Calrissian and Mace Windu, they actually had significant parts to play going forward. It wasn't just some virtue signal. They had important parts. Uh, Lando was obviously incredibly important in Return of the Jedi, both in freeing Han Solo and in coordinating the assault on the second Death Star and flying the Millennium Falcon. And then you have Mace Windu, obviously, as a powerful master of the Jedi Order, uh, leading the charge to try to arrest Palpatine at the end and was pretty integral in what happened at the end. And unfortunately, he went flying off the edge. But I mean, hey, if they can bring anyone back, I don't know see any reason why Mace Windu should actually be considered dead. I mean, I know he talked to Ray, but hey, they bring everyone back to life now, right? So might as well. Concluded the theme, or continued the theme of moral ambiguity. And I do think they tried to, uh, I do think they tried to do that. So, you know, I'll kind of agree with that. The original trilogy, within its brilliance, had a simple view of morals. While Vader turns good and Han joins a bigger cause than himself, these are still black and white turns with no dive into morality. The prequels offer a foundation for this, but they ultimately fail to dive into it all properly. Um, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think they did a great job of showing the Jedi as flawed as they were in the prequel era. Uh, because of their hardline stance. So I do think that uh, was kind of a delve into morals and moral ambiguity and why uh, when you uh, when you get stuck in your ways like the Jedi Order did and they get so arrogant, what can happen to you in the end? And then, I mean, this is really... Finn is a stormtrooper who becomes confused about his place, leaves the First Order, wants to run, unconvincingly fights for the Resistance until he finds his place. And then, in the second movie, he does the exact same thing. <laughs> so... Uh, I guess they just really wanted to keep playing that out. Luke grows up after being through a lot into an older man who questions his morality. Luke, Luke is a piece of shit. Let, let's face it. That's what they turned Luke Skywalker into. Same thing with Han Solo. So if that's what you mean by moral ambiguity, they just turn characters that were awesome into pieces of shit, then yeah, I suppose. Uh, this one, amazing new characters and performances. Uh, do we really even have to talk about this one? amazing new characters and performances. Kylo Ren is the best of the lot, and that is like being the tallest dwarf. It's like being, you know, it's not impressive. Um, he's the only one that anyone has any attachment to. And uh, I think he was an average character at best. Uh, no fault of Adam Driver, all fault of J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson, Kathleen Kennedy, and everyone at Lucasfilm. Expanded on the Force. Are you kidding me? There's there's talks about, uh, you know, we all know what George Lucas's plan was. He was going to delve further into the Force, into the wills and how midichlorians work. JJ said, well, we don't want to think of it as scientific. We just want to think of it as mystical. They didn't delve into it all. They ignored it. They brought us these new flashy Force powers because that's what JJ Abrams thought Star Wars was. That's literally what he said in an interview. He said, that's what people want to see. They want to see new Force powers. No, we want to see force powers done right. We don't want to see overpowered people. We want good characters, good stories, things that make sense in this world. They didn't expand upon the force. They made people die from using it. That doesn't make any sense. Now you've established a precedent now that you can force OD. Uh, they did not expand on the force in any significant way in this sequel trilogy at all. The return of Palpatine. Yes, for sure. And uh, he even mentions it here. Um, it's Rise of Skywalker sees the return of the famous Emperor Sheev, man, I hate that name, Sheev Palpatine, in a way that it was about as shoehorned as it was unexplained. It changed stuff in the timeline, history of the Sith Lords, and ending of Return of the Jedi. Not only did it undo the fact that Palpatine died, it also brings into question Anakin's status as the Chosen One, and if so, completely takes away from his arc in the story of the original trilogy. On top of that, it gives Palpatine children and gives away for a host of other questions, such as when, who is the mother, is there a mother, how did nobody know? Um, and yeah, I, I completely agree with a lot of this. Gives a cinematic swan song to some beloved characters. A swan song? You think that Han Solo going out as a deadbeat dad, a dude who abandoned his family and just falls down a shaft? You think that was a swan song? Carrie Fisher, who passed away, unfortunately. So you bring her, you animate her, uh, you literally animate her 
in episode nine. She looks she, like none of her dialogue makes sense. She goes through the movie like she has no idea what's going on because they just shoved her in there. And then she has some random scene where, again, she force ODs. You think that's a, a beloved, like a, a swan song? That's what you consider that as? Luke Skywalker, who was a hero for so many people for so long, goes out as a coward. He's not even there. He's force projecting himself. You think that's a swan song? Have to disagree. But this one, there's really no one that can dispute this last one. A trilogy with no vision. Star Wars has always had a vision and a voice at its core. And you can say you can say what you will about the prequels. I love the prequels. But you can't say that George didn't have a vision and that he didn't uh, get to put exactly what he wanted on screen. Because he did. And that is a huge difference with this sequel trilogy is there is no vision. Uh, while there are so many various people involved in its production, the vision was always clear and singular with the various voices all going through George Lucas to produce it. Disney produced a trilogy where there were various voices and no plan. The trilogy will forever remain a huge part of the universe and unfortunately will always be hurt by the lack of vision, no matter how good it is. It made the trilogy seem unnecessary and changed the franchise by both adding to it a set of movies and taking away a vision and concise story and timeline for it all. Uh, that's a hell of a way to end it, and I do agree that may be the biggest thing um, that came out of this sequel trilogy is the fact that there was no plan. It was just a cash grab. They just thought they could cash in on Star Wars. And unfortunately, when you really dig into the analytics, when you really dig into the money that's made, the amount that uh, goes back to the box offices, back to the theaters, um, Disney is still very much in the hole from this purchase. They can't afford to stop and really do a hard reset and give it really time to breathe. They have to keep producing more things because they are in the hole for Star Wars. And uh, Rise of Skywalker barely cracking a billion dollars does very little to help that. They make, they're going to make very little money from this when it's all said and done. Uh, but that's the article. I thought it was interesting. Didn't agree with all of it. Really agreed with some of the points that, uh, that this gentleman made at Screen Rant. So uh, what do you guys think about this? Uh, obviously, you know my thoughts on the sequel trilogy, on the decanonization of the expanded universe, and so much more of this. But let me know what you think of this list in the comments below. Do you think that the biggest problem with this trilogy was the fact that it had no vision all and no plan? They just thought they could fly by to see their pants and do it? Or do you think it was something else? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you smash a like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.